Now, when I first got into e-commerce, the entire process felt overwhelming. From choosing the right products to shipping them out, the responsibility seemed almost endless. But then I discovered drop shipping, which is a business model that turned out to be a game changer for me. At its core, drop shipping lets you sell items without ever having to stock them. It's as simple as that. You list a product on an e-commerce site, be it eBay, Amazon, or even Facebook Marketplace, for example. And then when a customer buys that item, you then order it from a third-party retailer like Amazon, Walmart, Target, or any other supplier just like that. Then the retailer ships the item directly to the customer and voila, you just made a sale without any of the traditional hassles that come with a normal business. And assuming you've priced your product high enough, you keep the difference in price as your profit. Now, one of the most appealing aspects of this business model is that it's remarkably low risk compared to almost every other business. You don't need to buy stock up front like I touched on. You don't need to store it and then wait for it to sell, which ties up tons of your capital in the process. You only need to purchase a product when you've already sold it and guaranteed to profit. It's by far a less financially risky way to approach e-commerce that allows you to list hundreds or even thousands of products without any upfront investment at all. Now, of course, like any business model, dropshipping does come with its own set of challenges. And one of the biggest hurdles that you'll face is keeping track of these fluctuating prices and making sure that you don't sell items that are out of stock. I mean, imagine this, you list an item on Amazon for $35 because you plan to order it from another site that sells it for 13 and then make that sweet drop shipping profit. But what happens if you suddenly realize that the price has increased to say $30 and now you're in a position where you might be losing money after the sale and the shipping costs and Amazon fees are deducted. Now to tackle this specific issue, especially for Amazon drop shippers, I typically recommend using software that's going to track your inventory and your price for you automatically. That way you never sell an item that's out of stock and you never ever lose money on a sale. For drop shipping on Amazon, one of the best software out there that I've come across is called Reprice Hub. This gem of a tool constantly checks the prices of the items that I'm selling against the third party website's current price. And if the price goes up, then Reprice Hub adjusts my listing price accordingly. So I'm still making money if it sells. And if the item goes out of stock, then the software updates my listing. So my Amazon inventory reflects that as well. And I'm never left scrambling, trying to source it from another website or having to cancel an order, which if you know anything about selling on Amazon is a big no-no that you want to avoid. It's like essentially having a virtual assistant that ensures I'll never lose money on a sale, which let's face it is the ultimate goal of any business. So when you first sign up for Reprice Hub, it'll look like this. And you'll notice that there's a ton of different features for this software. You can add products, which I'll show you here in a second. And you can also list products that you plan on drop shipping. You can even manage your orders and reprice your items. You can set shipping templates. You can set repricing templates and then apply them instantly as soon as you add a product too. So for example, here's a listing where if you look on Webstaurant store, these 10 by 14 gray plastic uh, food trays, 24 cases are selling for 45 24. But if you look on Amazon at these same ones, they're selling for 81.39. So this is a great opportunity to make drop shipping profit by listing this product on Amazon. And then any sales that we get, we then source it from Webstaurant to the customer. So how would you go about adding this into Reprice Hub to make sure that it's keeping stock of your inventory and changing your prices? Well, so essentially what you do is you go to Reprice Hub and then you go to Lister. Now you can add them in bulk if you want to, but I typically go with the single Lister. It makes it a little bit easier. And then you can just add one ASIN at a time. So we're going to go to the Amazon listing, scroll down to grab the ASIN. There we go. If you have Jungle Scout, like I always recommend, it's just up here on the top and you can copy it. So then paste the ASIN in there. The next thing's going to be the supplier product link because Reprice Hub is going to constantly scan it to make sure that it stays in stock and that the price doesn't go up or down. And if it does make those adjustments. So you want to take the URL of your product, paste it in there. You also want to nominate whether it's a retail website or a wholesale website. It's automatically going to grab the estimated supplier price and it's automatically going to put a 15% profit markup. And you'll also notice that it puts a 15% Amazon fee in there. Now, depending on the category on Amazon, it's going to be an 8% to anywhere from a 15% fee. So I like to personally just keep it at 15% to assume the worst. And then anything that we make on top of that is just added profit. It kind of gives you a little bit of wiggle room in there so that you're not losing money on sales. And if you want to create a template, so you don't have to do this every single time, you just click this little down arrow and click add new template. And you'll see here, we can say, okay, 15% profit, free shipping. And then every single time we have something with free shipping, 
shipping on a supplier's website where we know we're not going to be charged shipping. And it's going to obviously vary supplier to supplier. Then you can just apply this template and it makes it go a lot faster. So I would set up a few different templates. If you constantly source from a website that charges you like, I don't know, $4.99 shipping. If your price is under $30, well then make a $4.99 shipping, 15% profit template and apply that to all those listings when you list from that website. So we're going to set the profit up here. So it would be 15% profit, 15% Amazon fee. The supplier shipping cost here is going to be zero because this is assuming that we're sourcing from a supplier that has free shipping. Suppliers tax, suppliers discount are all going to stay the same. The bundle quantity is going to be one because we're not bundling anything together. I always recommend, especially for Amazon drop shipping, to increase your handling times. This is going to give you extra wiggle room because one of the metrics that they measure you by is how fast you're able to get shipments out based on the handling time criteria that you set in the back end of Seller Central. So always make this five. The last thing that you want to do is make it short because a lot of people think that the shorter you put your handling time, the better because one of the criteria that Amazon uses to see who gets the buy box and who wins the sales is delivery and availability to the customer. However, if you get a sale and then you're not able to actually ship it out in time, it's going to ding your metrics and ultimately hurt your seller account. Do not do that. I would rather not make a sale that's going to hurt my metrics or make fewer sales that I know are going to help my metrics rather than the opposite. So always make this five days. You can even go higher if you want, although five days is typically the sweet spot. Now, if you have a supplier where you know 100% that you're getting it out within a certain time period, then by all means shorten this. But this is just like a general rule of thumb to help most people. And vice versa, of course, too. One of the suppliers that we're gonna touch on here in a second is Newegg, and some of those can come from overseas. So if you're dealing with a supplier like that, then make sure you're increasing the handling time even more, right? Maybe 10 days if it's a specific supplier like that, just to make sure that your metrics stay intact. Now, I'm always gonna have the quantity at 10. I just like that. It's a good sweet spot. You could put it five, especially when you're using Reprice Hub, and it's just gonna restock the quantity automatically. It's totally fine. So always have all three of these checked as well. When the item sold, restock the quantity, reprice the product on Amazon. And obviously if the product goes out of stock, set the quantity to zero. So you don't sell an item where it's out of stock on your supplier's website. And then you have to cancel an order or, or scramble to source it from another website and then click save. And that way, every single time you don't need to apply all of these settings here, you can just choose and apply the template and then bam, it's automatically applied. Now the repricing strategy, you can add a strategy as well. So depending on whether or not your product has a buy box on the Amazon listing is going to be the criteria that you put in here to set up your repricer. So for example, this one does have a buy box. See how it has an add to cart and a buy now button. This one has a buy box. Let's find one that does not have a buy box as an example. So this is a perfect example of one that doesn't have a buy box. So if you're dealing with something like this, where it says see all buying options, then you want to match the lowest price. If you're selling something that's new with a buy box, where in this case, we're drop shipping something that does because this has the add to cart button and the buy now, then you're going to want to match the buy box price. All right. So going back to reprice hub, we're going to match the buy box price because it does have a buy box. Again, if it didn't have a buy box, then we'd match the lowest price by clicking here. These are really the only two that I use. I don't go FBM only or FBA only. Typically when you're on drop shipping listings, most of them, not all of them, but most of them are going to be other FBM sellers that are also drop shipping. It's rare that you're competing on a listing like in this case where we have FBA sellers, but it does happen occasionally, at least in my experience. So for this one, like I said, we're going to match the buy box. We are going to match it. You never want to price below. I also don't recommend pricing above because then you're waiting longer to make a little bit extra profit. Just match the buy box. Never price below though, because that's just ultimately going to trigger someone else's repricer and you guys are going to go race to the bottom pricing and then nobody wins. So never do that. Just match the buy box. Exactly. And this is going to be zero because you're matching. So you're not increasing or lowering it any amounts. So what to do if there's no competition, if there's no competition, you could say do not reprice or use the max price that you set. I'm going to say do not reprice. So choose what to do if the competition goes below my minimum price. So if the price goes below our minimum price, that means that we're going to lose money as well, right? So we don't want to reprice below that. We want to wait for them to sell out of their inventory. And then at that point, we'll make our sales that are profitable. You don't want to make a sale where you're losing money. That's just dumb, especially when you're drop shipping and you can control that. Don't change my price when I'm in the buy box. You want that enabled. So for example, if you're matching the buy box price, but somebody else has a lower price, then you don't need to change to match their price as well. If you own the buy box, so always enable that. Choose the minimum seller rating to compete against. I compete against everybody. I don't set a minimum seller rating. You can get complicated and do that. I don't do that. 
for most listings because in most cases you're only typically competing against three to five sometimes up to ten people but realistically you should be factoring that into how much you're selling as well based on the estimated sales volume of the listing again we're getting a little bit in depth here I use jungle scout to gauge the sales velocity and then also the competition on that listing and I use something called online seller add-on which you can see here and jungle scouts right there so I don't ever put this here now the only thing else that you need to add is the minimum profit right so with minimum profit what I like to do is a fixed profit amount I'll make sure that I'm making at least a dollar now you could set this up to have 15% profit and then you'd switch it to percentage but because I have VAs that are fulfilling my orders anytime I make a sale that's profitable I want that right even if it's a dollar that's totally fine we're gonna take that dollar and it's gonna increase our seller metrics which is ultimately gonna help our seller account overall that's the way that I approach it but again if you wanted to just make sure that all your sales are at least 10% or all your sales are at least 15% which typically in my dropshipping business on Amazon they're on average around 15% some of my sales are like 40% profit margin on certain products. And some of them are literally like 5% or 10% on average in the business. It's about 15%. So if you wanted to, you could just go 15% profit margin and go that way. But I always go dollar profit just to make sure that I'm profitable. And I never put my minimum price below a dollar profit and then you'd save it and then create the listing. And that's how easy it is to use reprice hub. And it does everything for you then once it's done you want to go over to the products page where you can manage your products you can apply the repricing strategy to it if you want to and you can go back in and edit it here you could also unlink it from your amazon inventory if you wanted to delete it you could do that as well and this is where you're going to slowly add all your products and they're going to be repriced for you and it's also going to monitor the stock now reprice hub is a game changer for amazon drop shippers if you want to try it out you can get 30 percent off your first month using the link in the description and code garrett it's going to make sure you're profitable on all your sales, ensure that your inventory stays in stock so you never sell something that you can't drop ship to the customer, and it's going to save you loads of time and money because then you won't have to spend hours manually checking them yourself or paying a virtual assistant to do it for you. Ultimately, drop shipping has significantly reduced the risks and challenges that I've faced in e-commerce. It's why I pivoted completely to it just two years ago. And this business model, complemented of course by time-saving software like Reprice Hub, has allowed me to focus more on growing my business than worrying about the logistical nightmares and putting out fires every day. So hope this helps and hope you crush Q4. It's almost here.